Shall we get my next guest out, ladies and gentlemen? I think we should. He's the man who I like to think of as the Archbishop of Comedy. Please welcome Stephen Fry. Oh, There you are. Stephen Fry, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Make yourself as comfortable as you can. Oh, my. Great to see you again. Nice to see you. Wow. It's a great... Um, it's an honour and a privilege to uh, be one of the three to help you off the naughty step today. <laughs> uh, God bless you, Nanny. Yeah. God bless you, Nanny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I couldn't wish for uh, lovelier helping hands. <laughs> Um, you look, he looks good, doesn't Stephen look good? You're looking pretty oh. handsome, you're looking rugged, you're looking, you're looking tanned. Is this because of your travels? Yes, I, I just got back uh, a few days ago from Australia and uh, New Zealand wow. from filming that. And this is a new series for the BBC, I believe? Yes, yes, it's a series about uh, endangered species. We were, we've been, I've been in the Amazon looking at manatees and in Africa looking at rhinoceroses wow. and gorillas and things and in Madagascar and then in New Zealand at the Kakapo. Now, the kakapo, what is a kakapo? Kakapo, uh, you probably know, in New Zealand, they, they, for millions of years, had no mammals. They, they, they only had, really, birds. Well, they had a couple of bats, to be, to be truthful, but they had no big mammals, no cats, no dogs, no stoats. I'm no. going to stop you there, because I had no idea. No, that. that's right. Well, it's, no, you... For millions I'm... of years, all they had were birds. <laughs> what, why and, was that? And so, just... Well, it's just when the continent, you know, of the, the great supercontinent sheared bit off in bits, it so happened it didn't carry any mammals with it and in the bit that was New Zealand. Wow. So... Uh, all the birds developed you know, pretty lazy habits because nothing wanted to eat them. Nothing's great. So they lost the ability to fly. And in the case of the kakapo, which is a parrot, a night parrot, huge, fat, wobbly thing. I think then we have a picture oh, of one there. Yeah, it, yeah, it, there it, it does just look like a very fat bird, or like, a, divine, like a, an it? owl parrot. Thing. Yes, you're quite right. Actually, that's its, its Latinized name means owl parrot. It's oh, right. Yes, yeah, well, you're very good. And um, <laughs> I mean, suddenly I feel like I'm on QI and I've just won a point. <laughs> <laughs> but it's rather an interesting thing about evolution is that fear itself is something that evolves because you need it. So when a deer kind of goes like that, when a twig snaps, it's because things want to eat deer. Yeah, yeah. But the kakapo, over millions of years, waddled around. Nobody wanted to eat it. And so when, very recently, man arrived in the shape first of the Maoris in the 13th, 14th, 15th centuries, uh, they brought rats with them. And then the Europeans arrived a few hundred years later and they brought cats and dogs. And I'm afraid that Kakapo just waddle up and go hello and, Sorry, and they would just be eaten and not even run away while they were being eaten. They thought, this is a new experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder if I like this. And they, and, and they would literally just pick them up and put them in a pot. It's oh, terribly no, sad. So, so there are 90 left in the world. Only the 90? 90. They also have the maddest system of mating. It's very odd. They, they, they dig a bowl and they, the males, they stand in it and they boom huge boom. It carries for, uh, for, for miles and so miles. Big, like a call. It's, to... it's like a blowing across a huge milk bottle. Um, and the females wander about trying to work out where the noise comes from because <laughs> a deep noise is very hard to locate. So they're, uh, you know, and then they go and they may decide not to make, the, and the, they're rather strange. I think strange. The, the same technique tried... that dance players use, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, dance players haven't tried to make me, as far as I know, whereas a kakapo did its very best to have my babies. It now, the, most... uh, but they're not, they're not human size. I mean, it's not as big as... Uh, they're, they're they're. Big, no, but they... they... This particular one, the thing about birds, as you probably know, there's a very famous Tom and Jerry episode, actually, where it happens, <laughs> is it, 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 when a, a chick hatches, oh, yeah. it thinks the first thing it sees is its parent. And it can be a human, it can be a dog, it can be a, another type of bird, like the ugly duckling famously yeah. thought it was. It's a, a sweet, a what a sweet trait. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so the cac this particular kakapo was imprinted as a human. So whenever it saw a human, the male, it would try and do its best. And Mark Carwardine, who's the great zoologist who's going around with me and teaching me all these things, he actually had the thing on, it, on, on his shoulder, beating its wings, trying to find a hole in the uh, back of his neck, I right. think. <laughs> Most mysterious. How weird. Yeah, but wonderful. I'd like, it's great to travel around the world. New Zealand's a very beautiful place. Very lucky to see all these animals. As you probably know, television is being almost entirely replaced by people going around yeah. the world, and I'm very lucky. But no, no, well, I can't have enough of that. I love those sort of shows, and I'm mm. really looking for, We're going to show a clip of this in a minute. Before we move on to the clip, which doesn't show the kakapo, you said there were something like 90 left, yeah. you know, and they used to be eaten. Did, did you get to eat one? Were you tempted? I mean, just, <laughs> well, because if there's 90, 89 is nearly 90, and that, that, that's, a, that's a real experience. You're isn't a it? very bad man, but and you a, may not quite have got hold of the right idea. You'd have to at least 
eat a wing or something. You know, uh, <laughs> it doesn't need its wing. That's a fair point. There you go. We could have a wing. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look. This is now. You're seeing here. Uh, this is where you see it's a it's a mouse something. It's a mouse lemur. Is that right? A lemur. Yes. Lima. Madame Bert's mouse lemur. And these are once again. This is an endangered species. It's a species. primate, like you and me. It's a primate, but tiny weeny. But so small. This is just a beautiful clip. Have a look at this. What a, what a yeah. lovely moment. It's a really beautiful moment. Yeah. To, to be there must have been yeah, really um, The series is called Last Chance to See. Let's hope that the title doesn't turn out to be a self fulfilling prophecy. Well, no, that's right. I mean, there are a couple of species um, um, that we wanted to look at that are now functionally extinct. One is the, uh, the dolphin, the river dolphin in China, and the other is the northern white rhino. And you, you couldn't find them? Or well, there are a few northern white rhino, but they're beyond mating age, and so the species will no longer exist in a that's few terrible, years. That's terrible, isn't it? What yeah. a terrifying thing. It is sad. Um, let me ask you about what was this? Uh, and I've been following Stephen Fry. There's something called Twitter. Ah, Elizabeth. Twitter. Twitter is an on Twitter. online. It's kind of a computer. It's like, like a, a message board essentially. It is a much mocked one by those who don't sort of get it. Um, and I can understand people not getting it because basically you've got 140 characters, including spaces, in which to say what you're doing. So it's like a text message, but it's, it's limited yeah, in size. They call it microblogging, which is a, a, perhaps a grand way of describing it. I find it wonderful because I, all these nice people, these fellow Twitterers, follow me, as it were. So when I when I'm around the world and I say, oh, I saw this today or I did this. And, of course, those who mock Twitter say, well, it's just saying, I had breakfast. And so on. <laughs> There's an element of I had well, breakfast. Well, I was following you. You follow people. You yeah. sign on and say, I'd like to find out what this person's up to. And a lot of it was showing how far you'd walked every day. And I got yeah. quite intrigued about the amount of walking you were doing. And yeah. I'll, be, I'll be honest, I began to worry about your walking. I was going to send you some taxi fare to get you back from one of them. <laughs> you sounded to me like you were overdoing the walking. But this yes. was just a post-Christmas... Uh... It is. Uh, I'm hopelessly overweight oh, no, figure. No, no. And... and Walking is the only thing I can do with any pleasure, and there's one reason I can walk with pleasure, and it's a really interesting one, I think, because it's technology which I love, or a sort of technology, and that's audiobooks. See, if you walk to music, it's fine. You can do a sort of Peter Kay thing for a while and do that sort of <laughs> marching to the music. And the willow, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But then you're kind of constantly going, no, I'm bored with that, I want something else, and you're stopping and you're, you know, rejigging your MP3 player. But an audiobook is just fantastic. You can walk. I mean, yesterday I walked six miles. I walked from my home in, in, in uh, wow. West Hampstead all the way to uh, Waterloo, past Waterloo. That's and it. it was the easiest thing in the world because I was listening to a great story and they're read by wonderful people. You can get them on the internet. I, I think I should try that. I've you never, should. You'll any really any love it. The great novelist. Let me ask you about, well, first of all, Lee, do you Twitter? Have you been tempted to Twitter? Tom, I think I know the answer, but do you spend time, do you waste time on the internet? You don't look like the kind of guy to waste time on me? Internet. Yeah. No. But no, hold it. The other Tom in there. Who do you think? <laughs> Now then. <laughs> Who me? Well, you know. Well, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mix us up. <laughs> that's, that looks like it's like you two together because you look like a genetic yeah. experiment that's gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a yeah. movie right there. No, there's a movie yeah. right there. You um, may find it rather sugary and unpleasant when guests on your show compliment each other, but there were two things I wanted to say about Tom Cruise. I know, I, I, wonderful I like film this, I One one is. Have you seen Tropic Thunder? It is possibly the best comic performance of the last five years on screen. Yeah, it's I've never laughed so much in my life. Yeah. And also, uh, just chatting to him about, I'm sure he's going to talk about his film Valkyrie, but he knows so much about the Second World War and about the yeah. planes and the kit and the politics of it. And it's, we've just been Well, have chatting. you seen the movie yet? Really interesting. I haven't. I've read the script because they very kindly offered me a part in it. Um, Was it Tom's part you I offered? Oh, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it always comes I mean, down to me and it. Tom or me and Brad in any, almost any yeah. role. At, um... imagine, imagine how different <laughs> Joey Maguire been if you'd have walked in and again, darling, listen, I must talk to you. I've been going awful a I've been thinking about it some length. You go, will you please shut up and let me get a word in? Like, would you be kind enough to exhibit the money? I would have said. <laughs> 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 but, uh, it's the, the yeah. highbrow version. Um, and she would have said, you had me at good morning, madam. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great film, aren't it? It is a fine, fine film. Um, but, you know, you're, uh, this is a nice thing to know, is that you're a fan of America. You're a fan of America generally. And you did that mm. show, of course, for BBC I, I, I did. I visited every, every one of the 50 states. I had a marvellous every time. Every single one. That's incredible. Yeah. It, it really was. Dri driving around, up and down, up and down, and that met some marvellous people. Generally speaking, I find Americans honourable, polite, kindly, well-intentioned, thoughtful. This whole idea that it's just a, a morass of pig ignorant fools yes. is so I think says more about the British superiority or in fact ultimately inferiority complex that we need to attack Americans and there's one thing uh, I mentioned in, in the book that I wrote of the series is that uh, there's a phrase only in America which Americans use and they use it when something 
remarkable happens, something extraordinary. Somebody invents a bizarre machine or does a weird stunt, and they go, ha, only in America. And it's, it expresses kind of optimism and amazement. They are surprised by their own country. Now, if you think about when someone would say, only in Britain. <laughs> it would be because there's a queue and it's raining and it's incompetent and someone had said, no, no, you can't. And you would say, God, only in Britain. And that, to me, is one of the differences. And it's such a clear difference. I've been in America so uh, many times. I used to live, I used to have an apartment in New York. And, and it is as clear as the difference between the Arctic and the Sahara is yeah. that in America, there's just, yes, well, okay, we, we'll try that. Let's try it. Let's there's do it. Optimism, maybe, though. you know, um, maybe we'll fail. And in Britain, it's kind of, oh, no, no, no. It's just well, let's, let's see if we can turn that around. Let's see if we can make this a positive beginning, a, yeah. a whole new wave. Uh, how lovely to have you here, Stephen. It's great to have you on the show. I want to end on just a little clip. This is you in America, and I love this moment. It's the clip where you're, where you're trying to ride a horse. No, I think. Don't. Is it perhaps for the very first time you've been on a horse? Horses, or? I'm sorry, I know many people love horses in Britain, but they are the stupidest animals. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not, they have great instinct and so on, but it's essentially that they, every day, rather like, is it Guy Pierce in that film, Mnemonic, you know, they, don't <laughs> yeah. mean Mnemonic? Um, no, uh, Memento. Memento. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have to reinvent it. So they kind of go, oh, what's that? It's a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's that? It's a hedge. <laughs> you saw one yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's a person. Well, it's another horse. <laughs> and you'll see this. I I'll be honest with you, but here, I oh. think in this clip, I, I don't think the horse is the one that, that no, we're going to be I... laughing at necessarily. <laughs> this is Stephen uh, when he toured America. Look at oh, this. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never again. Never again. Never again. Once was enough. <laughs> uh, lovely to have you here. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in saying thank you to Mr. Stephen Fry. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. See you later. Thank Stephen Fry, ladies and gentlemen.